The Shopping Hall, written and read by D.G. Chichester. Looking through the driver's side window at the keys dangling from the ignition, Adrian knew that she was going to be late for work. Morning sunlight streamed in through the windshield, creating sparkles off the bejeweled keychain, the tiny rhinestones spelling out, all the world and more. She yanked at the door handle again and again, the tenth such set of again and again, with the same result. Fuck. Locked. Adrian stormed back into the house and returned in a short moment with a hammer in one hand. She had a busy schedule to keep, and she wasn't going to let getting locked out of this car keep her from the big thing she expected from the day. She swung the hammer at the driver's side glass. Ouch! The hammer pinged back off the glass with a sharp ricochet, twisting her elbow. At the same time, the head of the hammer slipped off the top of the handle and flew into the yard's tall grass behind her. Better and better, Adrian said. She kicked around in the grass until the toes of her open-toe sandal connected with a hunk of metal. A lowercase youch this time. She scooped up the errant hammerhead and jammed it back on the handle. It promptly slipped right back off. Jammed it down again. No luck. Adrian took aim and let the hammerhead fly. It hit the driver's side window in the upper right corner and shattered the glass. She popped the lock, swept the pebbled safety glass off the seat, and turned the key. Freedom, she cheered, shifting into drive and heading off on Tuesday's Road to Adventure. Making her way up and down the aisles in Target, Adrian was self-conscious as she always was when she started work. Her pants were too loose, her jacket too baggy. If someone glanced her way early in the day, Adrian recognized she didn't look very well put together. But as the day went on and the store's items made their way off the shelves into the hidden pockets inside the folds of those pants and that jacket, she started to fill out not just in shape, but in confidence. As her girth increased and she began to waddle her way from mall store to mall store, she ignored the paying shoppers looking at her girth with contempt. While they were lightening their wallets, she was packing on goods and profit. The system wasn't flawless, but it had paid off over the years. She saw no reason to do anything but keep benefiting from it. After a haul, it was down to the car in the parking garage, unload her stolen goods into the trunk, and then move on to the next mall for more of the same. Adrian was almost at the exit ramp when the security vehicle passed her quickly on the left. It suddenly swerved in front of her, stopping midway across the lane and forcing her to hit the brakes. The security vehicle, a hulking white SUV with blue letters on the side that read, protecting shoppers, preserving profit, seemed small in comparison to the hulking security officer now sliding out of the driver's side. He pulled the nightstick from his belt and walked with slow purpose to Adrian's side of her car. What kind of move was that, she demanded. I could have run right into you. Wouldn't want that, the officer said. Adrian noted the name above the pocket on his security shirt, Vincenzo. Vincenzo mock-tapped his nightstick against the empty space where her driver's side window had been. Looks like you've already had an accident today. I noted the broken glass on my rounds earlier. Trouble in the parking garage? Thank you for your concern, Adrian said. But that happened at home. That's a shame, Vincenzo said, his eyes just barely visible behind his mirrored shades. They glided back along the length of the car, admiring. Nice ride deserves better treatment. I suppose, Adrian thinks. It wasn't hers anyway. She'd boosted it from the Walmart parking lot in Edwardsville two nights ago. She'd be ditching it as soon as she unloaded her goods this afternoon. Maybe you'd like to open the trunk for me and show me the receipts for what I saw you packing in there. Why do I have to justify my day at the mall to you? Because you're about 30 pounds lighter than how you looked on the security cams as you came out to your car. Maybe it's the angle. They say the camera adds weight, but let's be sure. Adrian was caught, cornered, no way out. She was a no drama thief. She didn't come armed for altercation, only an appetite for earnings. Then her eyes glanced on the hammerhead, on the passenger seat where it had bounced to a rest after her early morning break-in. Her body turned toward the officer, hiding the motion of her right hand as it reached back and over to grab the metal in her hand. Now, please, ma'am, Vincenzo said as he popped the door for her. She squeezed hard on the claw end of the hammer, the sharp edges biting into her hand, slicing into her skin. Adrian let the hammerhead drop and clenched her fist, the space inside her fist filling with blood. I'm coming, she said, stepping out of the vehicle. Oh my God, she gasped, staggering and bringing her right fist quickly to her face. She opened her fingers and the blood splashed across her nose and mouth. Some kind of sharp pain inside my head, she said. 
Officer Vincenzo shifted quickly from suspicion to concern. He stepped closer. Let me see, let me help. Adrian grasped his strong bicep with her left hand, seemingly looking for balance. Her bloody right hand grabbed hold of his nightstick, leaving a bloody trail down its length. Let's get you a doctor, Vincenzo said. Why did you do this to me? Adrian screamed. Parking lot shoppers snapped their attention in her direction. Blood on her face, blood on the nightstick. There was a rush to her defense. What did you do, man? Leave her alone. Even the mall cops are goddamn animals now. They surrounded Officer Vincenzo, their rising voices drowning out his objections. In the improvised confusion, Adrian slipped back behind the wheel and steered her way around the SUV. Preserving profit, goddamn right, mine, she said. Accelerating away from the mall, the glittering rhinestones hanging from the ignition caught her eye. Dump the wheels, keep the keychain, she thought. All the world and more. Thanks for listening to The Shopping Hall. Written and read by D.G. Chichester. Copyright 2020 by D.G. Chichester.